Oh boy, this uh, third episode of Cassie and Andor brought it home, and, and it was a home run in my opinion. 10 out of 10 for this episode, 10 out of 10 for the intro three episodes of the premiere of this show, giving us most of the main characters and definitely establishing this initial arc of who Cassie and Andor is, the people he grew up with, his backstory, and Luthen's character. Oh my goodness, is he a badass? I just can't wait for more. I'm Tim Anderson, aka Renfell, sometimes known as the Bearded Dwarven Princess. Welcome to my review of Andor Episode 3. Before we get going, of course, this is the part where I say spoilers ahead. I don't do spoiler review views. We're going to be talking about the episode in its entirety. So if you don't want things spoiled, walk away now. Come back after you've watched the episode. But if you're okay with that, we're going to move forward from here. But before we do, thanks to all of these people for supporting the channel. Because of them, I get to do this full time. They keep the lights on. They keep the internet paid. They keep me looking healthy and fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You too can support. It's very simple. Drop a super thanks on this video. A couple bucks, five bucks, a cup of coffee, a meal out, 25 bucks, 50 bucks. Go crazy. It's up to you. Join as a member of the Adventurers Guild. It's $2.99 a month. Consider me a Netflix subscription or a Disney Plus subscription if that's more apt for you. Want to know more? Well, we'll talk about it at the end of the episode. For now, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an episode. And from here, let's get into the actual review itself. So, um, we start off with the uh, crashed ship, and I initially thought at the beginning of this episode that it was an Imperial vessel, um, because of the way it looks in the interior, it's, it's all kind of black and polished and everything else, but uh, we do get uh, word later on that it's a Republic ship, and there's some dialogue that explains it along the way, but we'll get to that here in a moment. For the meantime, though... The pacing during the early parts of this episode is way faster than any of the previous episodes. They are just going bang, 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 flashback sequence, you know, to modern sequence, flashback, current, flashback, current, flashback, current. And we are moving forward to something that we know is coming. We know an action sequence is coming because of the way they're setting this up. This is really good pacing, really good writing, really good storytelling here. Um... The music is also picking up here as we're back, and it's like the falling, it's like the opening to the Jedi Fallen Order, because we see the ships being cut apart on this planet, and Andor's in the heart of this junkyard looking for his friend, letting him know, hey man, the money that I've been wanting to get for so long, it's coming today, and I'm going to leave cash with Marva to pay what I owe you, um, please take care of her, but we get an insight into Andor that he... Despite all of his flaws, he definitely has a sense of loyalty to his friends and to his family. And so, though he may do bad things, at the core of this, remember, he is a chaotic good character. He is a good guy who has to do bad things occasionally for the right reasons. Right? Yeah, right. So, anyway. But he's telling his friend, you know, I've got the money coming. Please look out for Marva. She'll pay you what is owed to you. Um, and, you know, we're... we're you know, back to Luthen now, and 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 why why is he so interested in this device that Cassian has? Um, and obviously, you know, he's coming to town. Bix obviously knows him, runs up to him. She's like, "There's been a complication." And Luthen says, "Well, if he's killed those guys, we better hurry." Do you trust him? And she says, "Yes." Okay. Um, the transport's coming down to the planet, which it just gave me Empire Strikes Back vibes. As as the Corpo ship drops out of hyperspace and then launches these three transport vessels, very cool. These guys are obviously trained, um, Corpo security, and from what we got from the previous episode, they're like the first line of defense before the Empire comes in with stormtroopers. Um, good stuff here. And then we're back to the flashback, and we see that when Marva was younger, she was a ship scavenger, and she was scavenging the crash ship with the droid that we've seen when she finds a young Cassian tearing up the interior. Passing, you know, pacing, jumping around here. We're back to the transport ships. There's uh, um, turbulence going on. They're hitting the planet. The deputy inspector looks a little nervous, but the other guy looks completely calm. His crazy sergeant. Uh, now they're back to the the flashback sequence. We're back to the young kid again, young Cassian. And we hear Marva saying, a Republic ship is coming. They'll kill this kid if we leave him. Give me the dowser. And her partner's like, no, he's got people here. Just leave him. And she's like, yeah people who just killed a republic officer it'll be open season on him so she drugs him and takes him off planet so this is obviously how he's separated from his sister which leads to the next question has marv ever told him the truth like does he know that she took him off planet 
and and like because he was drugged. I mean, he does wake up on the ship at the end of the episode and realizes he's being taken off planet, which we're gonna get to that sort of at the end of this because of the way the pacing works for this episode. But like, has she been helping him try to find his sister this whole time? I'm not quite sure. I need to know more about the backstory between Marva and and Cassian. Um, but obviously he was taken off planet so that he wouldn't die at the hands of I guess Republic officers who were coming down to the crashed ship. Um, uh, present times, and we find Marva answering the door with the deputy inspector and his hardcore sergeant there. They find the droid. The droid panics. Marva's telling him, don't, don't give up anything. And then right then, that calm that Cassian gave him in the second episode flips on, and it's Cassian going, are you there? Are you there? You know, tell Marva this, that, and the other. And they start tracking the comm device, and unfortunately, it's leading them straight to Cassian. Now, from here, we've got uh, a crowd gathering. They're anti-corporal, obviously. Everyone's starting to riot to defend Marva, and the scene is changing fast. Um, now, whatever Cassian has here is he's explaining it to Luthen the Buyer, which technically still hasn't been introduced to yet, but we know his name, so I'm using it anyway. Um, this device, I guess, tracks Imperial ships, which sounds super useful. Um, and, uh, it's obvious that Luthen doesn't trust Cassian and vice versa. We get a typical scene of, did you bring the money? Do you have the thing? Yes, I have the thing, but how can I trust you? How can I trust you? Uh, very typical. We've seen this a million times. It's the one part of this show, one part of this episode that's felt a little cliched, but it, I'm going to let it pass because it's a necessary scene that has to happen. Um, flash forward now to the, uh... To the um, ship scrapyard area, the, the the office, the mechanic office where Bix works, and she finds out that it was her boyfriend that ratted Cassie now, and she's pissed and she runs off trying to find him. Um, there's this dialogue between Luthen and and Cassie in the in the 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 factory, um, and Luthen is basically trying to figure out who who are you? Like you're you're either a spy or you're working for the spy or you you know. You are something else, and and Luther has questions, man. He's like, this is way out of Bix's league. You would have had to sneak into an Imperial base to get this. How did you get your hands on it? I'll give you a thousand credits to tell me how you got it. He's super intrigued by how Cassian got his hands on this device, and Cassian tells him, and this is the line of dialogue we've seen from all the trailers. Brilliant piece of writing here. Brilliant delivery of the dialogue, but it's this sequence of you just walk in like you belong. To steal from the Empire, you just need a uniform, some dirty hands, and an Imperial toolkit. They're so proud of themselves, they don't even care. So fat and satisfied, they can't even imagine it. That someone like me could ever get inside their house, walk on their floors, spit in their food, and take their gear. And this is when we get a sense of who Luthen is. Because he says, their arrogance is astounding, isn't it? So Luthen has seen a kindred spirit here. They don't even think about us. Um, and... and we, the dialogue sort of continues, and, and Cassian is wanting to sort of speed things up because he's like, let's get this show on the road. You pay me. Take your thing. Let's get out of here. But Luthen's on a roll now. He's 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 in the middle of what we come to find out is a recruitment speech. And he's, you know, if they found me, they would hang me. Yeah, they'd hang me right up there, just like they hung your father. And this is when Cassian freaks out and pulls a blaster and says, what is this? Who are you? And we haven't met I you know we've obviously met his adopted mother, so we need to know who's who is his adopted father. Are we going to get more about this backstory? I really hope we do. Well, I guess we'll find out later. Um, but this this uh, this section of um, speech here, where where Luthen goes on then to say, "I know you. I know all about you. Um, I'll I'll take the box. So that's all I can get. But I came looking for something more, and I think I found it. I want you to come with me. I was hoping for a more relaxed conversation, but you're right. We don't have time. We need to go." And of course, Cassie's like, why would I go anywhere with you? And this is the dialogue. What a recruitment speech, because Luthen, with a blaster to his head, literally leans forward and he's like, don't you want to fight these bastards for real? And it's like, oh, that's how he gets them. That's how he gets them, because now it's like, it's personal. Let's take the fight to them. Let's fight these Imperial bastards. Mm, 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 mm. Good stuff here. Um, the villagers start sounding an alarm as the corporals on the streets are like ringing, like banging on drums and banging on metal things, and everyone starts running and prepping, shutting doors, preparing for something. And then we're back to the factory. They're surrounded. Luthen knows they're being tracked. Gets upset. You know, 
breaks uh, uh, Cassian's comm device. Then the girl gets captured on the street, Bix's character. But, man, Luthien is a legit spy. He's, like, giving him these rules as they talk. And rule number two was build your exits on the way in. And he placed charges on the door. <laughs> which is fucking awesome so even as they're being surrounded by these corpos he blows the doors kills a bunch of the dudes but of course this starts to bring the factory down around them um and they you know there's this whole sequence of cassian desperately wanting to try to get the box as the building is falling down around them because it's been his lifeline for somewhere he just can't leave without it despite luthan telling him he used to leave it but they can't get it out they do fall uh the, the building does fall they get out um Bix gets captured. Boyfriend tries to rescue her. Gets shot. Corporals are setting up an ambush. I'm telling you, this sequence was just this. This whole episode was just action, 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 action. Super fast paced. Super fun. Um, the corporals are setting up an ambush here. Uh, Marva's talking about to the one guy who's in her house. She's like, "You wanted it to stop, but it just keeps coming." And she's referring to the nose noise. And she says, "When it, it's when it stops, that's when you're really gonna want to start to fret." The clanging is going on. And she settles in to wait, and finally, there's silence. And this is where Cassian gets the drop on the deputy inspector. And the shot when the blaster comes into frame and the chamber inside the blaster loads is so cool. And, of course, Cassian's like, how many men do you have with you? The deputy inspector doesn't want to say. And we hear Luke in the background, kill him. And he won't do it. He says, well, I'll kill him if you won't. And immediately, the deputy inspector's like, there's 12, I mean, 14 of us, 12 men and two officers. So... We get a scene here that Luthen has no no qualms about killing people. Um, whereas, as we saw from the first episode, Andor does have qualms about killing innocent people. He tries not to kill people if he can avoid it. Um, so he ends up leaving the guy tied up. Um, they go get some speeders and you know try to basically make their way out of town and set up a, deep, a decoy speeder that comes out. And and that blows up um, as but as right right before this is happening though I forgot the sequence here I got to go back to my notes because I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm so excited. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, one of the soldiers, one of the corporal guys, gets to his transport and tries to fly it up, but it's been chained down to a bunch of debris and it flies around and hits a building and blows up. And this is when the shit hits the fan because once that happens, we get the the speeder coming out of nowhere and it's loaded with explosives and it charges into a bunch of the corpos and flips over. And then we see Cassian and Luthan on a speeder going out of town and the corpos all turn around. I'm like, Oh no, he's getting away. And Luthan hits the button and it blows up. It kills a bunch of the corpos and the deputy inspector's freaking out now because he just lost a bunch of lives and he knows he's going to be in deep shit with his boss because he thought this was going to be a simple extraction. And now it's something more, um, crazy times uh they obviously didn't kill the guy uh cassian left him locked up and uh it's crazy here um the end of this episode is basically a bunch of um, sequences going on um as they're crossing the planet on the speeder there's a flashback to marva carrying the kid off then we're back to the present day while she's crying looking at the droid why i don't quite understand why she's crying knowing that cassian escaped or for some other reason i don't really know but the end of this episode is basically everyone being sad in the aftermath of the chaos and at the same time it's a great ending because as we're heading out of the landscape towards luthan's ship we get to the ship and oh boy what a ship and as we do the escape sequence, as the as the ship is flying off planet, we're flashing back to the kid's days when he was a kid waking up on Marva's ship as it was escaping the mining planet um, compared to escaping the planet this time. And in both cases, he's alone with people he doesn't know in a strange ship on the run from soldiers with people he has no idea about into the sunset, into the sunrise, into the great beyond into a great big galaxy far, far away. What an ending to this initial trio of episodes. I am officially hooked. Give me more. 10 out of 10. I can't wait for next week. It's going to be epic. If you like this, do me a solid. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get more like this. Drop comments below about what you liked most in the episode. And like the rest of these people who support me here on the channel, it would be awesome if you did too by dropping a super thanks on this video. There's a button down there where you can say thanks. It's got a dollar sign on it. 
contribute what you can, keeps the lights on, keeps me going full time. You can also join as a member of the Adventurers Guild down there, which is our membership option, kind of like Disney Plus or Netflix if you'd like to. There's also a Patreon page for that world map behind me, which I work on with my brother and my wife. More information on all that stuff down below and elsewhere. Thanks to everybody for being here. Thanks for watching, and I will see everybody in the next episode. May the Force be with you, everyone. Cheers.